to share something with you, a part of my um, advertising and marketing life, and um, I'm going to do something very special. I'm not going to use slides. <laughs> so all you have to do is listen to my voice. <clears throat> um, I'm talking about the end of advertising as we know it. So welcome to the awesome and exciting world of media and advertising. Follow me into a world of evident change. Um, we might call it worlds in upheaval. Remember a few years ago, people told you there was an awesome new revolution underway. Something at least as big as this Gutenberg guy who invented the printing press. No, even bigger than that. Just a few years ago, everybody laughed. Who's laughing now? Yes, we're talking media. Can you think of any other market that is changing faster than media? Okay, I guess you can. <laughs> uh, retail is going e-commerce. Uh, autos are going car sharing. Food is going sustainable and is starting to get green. But honestly, when it comes to food, um, I personally don't really trust that organic stuff. And I'm definitely not buying my fruit online. I certainly am not the right guy to discuss car sharing, and online shopping uh, might be highly efficient, but don't tell me it's fun. Though to be frank, I'm not an expert in e-commerce, so uh, let's turn back to, to media and advertising. That is a topic I'm an expert in. So do you want to tell me what this market is going to look like after it has, it has changed? Print media are dead. Right? <clears throat> this is why they call them dead tree media. Just to make sure they know where they stand and where they're going to start dying. When it comes to media decision makers in the advertising and agency uh, industry, newspapers are clinically dead. They started dying years ago. Presumably, the reason was not even cardiac arrest, but rather brain death. No, it had nothing to do with an absence of passion, more with a totally false perception of reality. Today, newspapers lie on the dissecting tables of research pathology, waiting for forthcoming generations to explain their creeping exodus, which might in the future at least be interesting for the one or other bachelor thesis. Our girl singer, uh, she will be interested in that. <laughs> so there we finally have change. Newspapers are dead. But wait, we do have a problem. There is this crazy guy buying one local newspaper after the other. After having bought a total of 63 papers for $142 million, he is now adding world-famous ones like the Greensboro News and Record, you've heard of that, and Tulsa Rec a World to his collection. Okay, this guy is crazy, buying ink and dead tree media in the age of Facebook and Twitter, as the Austrian economic magazine Bilanz put it. Fact is, you know this guy. You've heard his name before. His name is Warren Buffett. And he is one of the hugest investors in the world. Now, what does he know what we don't? And why is he calling local newspapers the most important establishment for towns with a high corporate feeling? Why is he using expressions like establishment and strange worlds like feeling <clears throat> when he's talking about a medium that should be silently and slowly dying away? And for goodness sake, why is he seriously talking about return on investment? Okay, so maybe newspapers aren't really dying at all. They are changing, though, 
local dailies will change into sort of weeklies when it comes to agenda setting, depth of investigation, width of opinions. Stuff some, somewhere between eye-opening, breathtaking, and mind-bending. Like the content magazines used to offer in the good old days when magazines were made for their readers and not for the commercial collection of advertising money. That, to be precise, <clears throat> was the exact moment everything started to go wrong in the magazine business. Publishers would think up magazines purely invented for virtual target groups, <clears throat> namely target groups advertisers were interested in, like the next new dozen of chic magazines for young addicted girls or technically in interested young male computer and game freaks. But don't worry, most of these magazines are gone already. They come and they go, <clears throat> but don't mind, they are useless, at least to readers. The strange thing about magazines today is we have more than ever. Circulations have dropped substantially. The real change, though, is that more magazines are being developed for more specific and, wow, for real target groups. A media planner's dream come true, so to say, in case these very, very busy people wish to approach individual targets, they have the time and desire to identify instead of only counting their profits all day. Okay, so at least there's something changing in the media world. Uh, let's tackle TV. If you ask me, TV is dead. Sure, people still watch, but it's not quite what it used to be. If print is dead tree media, then TV is dead brain media. The TV set is still on, but only to make sure that the people at the audience survey companies don't get a heart attack every morning. In real life, we're doing just about everything but watching. We're checking emails, shopping, chatting, Facebooking, and tweeting. Today, TV is more like radio, isn't it? It's on, but more like a daily companion sitting around in the, in the corner. Every once in a while, sure, I definitely need to lean back and just consume whatever junk they might be showing. <clears throat> but most of the time, I lean forward. I do what I'd love to do. Personally, for instance, I'm a Twitter addict. You can find me uh, at, at UFO Media. So please don't ask me who done it during TV dramas. I wouldn't care less. Not as long as I can be counting faves on Twitter and likes on Facebook at the very same time. What is really changing is my attitude towards and the way I use media. What's important? What's relevant? What's fun? I need only split seconds to decide, and mostly, I run away. Multi-channel, multi-screen, to researchers, it might seem as if I were using numerous channels and screens at once, but I'm not a girl. As an awkward male, I'm far from being even capable of multitasking. Dear advertisers, have you ever thought of that as a barrier? This is where advertising comes in. This is where Sergio Simon, the former chief marketing officer of the Coca-Cola company, was right 10 years ago when he read his legendary book, The End of Advertising as We Know It. What does all this mean to advertising? Do you ad guys really believe in interrupting my online usage the same way you interrupt the TV audience? Do you honestly believe you can stalk me online the way you do? I mean, successfully. Just take a close look at the development of click rates. At the very start, banners excited 40% of all of the users. 40%. By 1996, click rates were down to 8%. And last year, surveys in Germany <clears throat> gave us an average of 0.2%. Let me guess when we hit the bottom line. This is not making sense. 
The goal of advertising cannot be to attract exactly nobody at the end of the day. Something is going severely wrong in our own advertising business. If the media eventually turn out not to change as much as we thought, print isn't really dead. They just don't want to die. TV is alive, but somewhere in nirvana. <clears throat> and online knows not better than repelling and stalking people. Maybe we should take a closer look at our own business. Maybe we are doing something wrong. Maybe the big change everybody is waiting for lies in the midst of our own ad industry. When did Procter and Gamble proclaim that the consumer, all of us, is king? That was way back in 2000. And exactly what were the consequences of this? Like airing TV commercials for Swiffer and Breff way past midnight in cheap horror movie ad breaks, and definitely way past their, their audience. Nope, Procter and Gamble, that's not good. No wonder these guys are exactly at this moment searching for their return on investment. Ha ha. <laughs> it's so easy. When did our advertising industry begin to establish the idea of and the necessity behind attention economy? That was in 2005. And what are the consequences today? Annoying our targets with pop-ups and this disturbing thing called targeting, like being stalked by a toaster just because I searched for one? <laughs> we have come up with pretty good ideas in the past. Alas, the practical outcome turns out to be a disaster. Instead of attracting people, we are annoying them. According to recent GFK research here in Germany, more than 40% of all brands are losing on regular and loyal customers. Sure they are. <laughs> their ads are not relevant. Their communication is replaceable. Their media approach is identical. They are boring. I have a brilliant idea, I hope. What if we just did what we have been announcing for the past 15 years? like taking our consumers seriously, like inviting them to a dialogue now that social media is offering the platform to do so. Let me give you a few examples. Dear Airlines, ask me if I want the cheapest flight forcing me to stop over and double flight time. Maybe instead I care more for on-time <laughs> flights, more comfort and some service and not less. Dear soft drinks, like Capri Sonne, who were just awarded the golden Windbeutel, whatever that means in, in English, uh, for, <laughs> for the most brassy advertising lie in Germany. Ask me if I, were, if, I, if I would buy more of your junk for my kids if you included less sugar, like Coca-Cola is doing. Dear discounters, uh, like Kick, ask me if I were capable and willing to pay one euro more for your 1.99 t-shirts and 5.99 jeans if you would guarantee that 1,100 young women in Bangladesh didn't have to die sewing. Dear supermarkets, ask me if I really want horse meat in my lasagna. <laughs> Dear Amazon, Ask me if you need to harass your employees just to make sure I receive my parcel tomorrow. Is that so important? I could go on like hours. Um, dear everybody, would you please take a short time off from your greed of gain and profit and listen to your customers for a second? Come to think of it, what was and what should modern marketing be all about? Wasn't it all about being unique, offering benefits, satisfying needs, and fulfilling desires? Sorry, marketing, you're not doing that anymore. You're not even listening. Sorry, advertising, you're boring me. You've totally forgotten how to excite me. Sorry, media, when was the last time I really looked forward to the next issue of a magazine or the next show on TV? 
except for tomorrow with a, you know the football game <clears throat> Where did the thrill of publishing and producing go to? All of you, damn it, stop boring me. Let's be frank, the impact of digitalization to our world and lives is enormous. Sure, we all needed a bit time to understand and handle this transformation, but now, 20 years after the personal computers and the internet, shouldn't we have reached some stage of maturation? The time has come to stop masturbating. Yes, I said masturbating. <laughs> the, the time has come for marketing, media and advertising businesses to return to satisfying. Not your own needs, but the needs of your beloved partners. Your consumers are your beloved partners. If you want to be loved back, that's what they want, you have to love the hand that feeds you. Now call that 360-degree marketing, if you wish. What happens if you don't? Now that's easy to answer. People will create their own products and devices. They do with every startup, and they definitely will do so once they own 3D printers. Can you imagine how that will change the industries? People will create their own media. They already do so every day on YouTube. They do so every day with their blogs and with their tweets. And at the end of the day, they will even be their own advertising and media agents, thanks to Facebook and Twitter. Oh, you don't want that to happen? Uh, at least not to the final implication. You brands and media, you journalists, marketeers and agency folk, well then do something about it. Listen for the very first time in your lives. Embrace your customers and, damn it, fulfill the expectations. Listen, love and fulfill. Believe me, if you don't change, we're going to change you. Thank you very much.